Guys, we're going to have to leave some stuff behind for him to grow into maturity. We're going to have to let go of some things. We're going to have to reach forward. Paul said, forgetting the things that are behind, pressing toward the mark. I, that's, a, that's, a, that's a going for it's not a It's not an I'm hungry for a move of God. You, don't, you can get out of that mentality. Jesus said, if a man eats my flesh and believes on me, he's never hungry, never thirsty again. So anybody that's preaching to you deficit or lack is preaching to you from the wrong side of the covenant. So if people are coming to you going, you need to be asking for more of God, I would say, I thought Jesus said that man shall never hunger, that man shall never thirst. The reality is you don't need more of God, you just need to wake up to the God you have. You, you just, you've been so asleep for so long on how he is in you. Did you know that's the New Testament way to stop sinning as well? It doesn't get preached much, but Paul said in 1 Corinthians 15, if you awake to righteousness and sin not. In other words, how can you stop sinning? Wake up to how righteous you are. Your, your problem is, is you don't think you're righteous. So you go about this whole thing trying to figure out how to do it on your own. God, help me get over this. And the Father's going, help you get over what? I've already died to sin once. You and I live together. I raised you up in a newness of life. Wake up! Yeah. Wake up to your sonship. Wake up to who you are in me. Wake up to who I am in you. Don't sleep on this. Don't let the system of this world lure you into a sleep that you are everything they say you are. They're lying to you. They don't have your best in heart. The Father loves you. The Father has died for you. The Father has raised for you. Jesus is not standing up in the temple. Jesus is setting down. <laughs> Hebrews wears that out for five chapters that Jesus is seated because a Jew had a priest with no chairs in the temple. The priest didn't get to sit down. Because their job was never done. The moment you killed one lamb, somebody else sinned. Go back and look at the tabernacle. There's no chairs. There's only one seat in the whole tabernacle. And it's behind the curtain in the most holy place, and it's called the mercy seat. And God sits there. And there's got to be blood on it. Right? And there's a cherubim on both sides overlooking the mercy seat. And then Jesus dies. And the veil is rent in the temple from top to bottom. The veil that separates the holy place from the most holy place. And John runs on ahead into the tomb on resurrection morning. And peers into the empty tomb. And there's an angel sitting on one side. And there's an angel sitting on the other side. And there ain't no body in between. And Paul would say he's torn down that petition and Jesus is sitting at the right hand of the father the only chair in the tabernacle is where God sits so guess where Jesus is sitting and he ever lives to make intercession for you I'm not going back out front and killing another lamb because I've already died once for all so I'm finished with the death business and I'm in the life business so when you come to me I put my life in you you and I go live this together there ain't no footprints in the sand. The ones where there's one set of footprints is where I carried you. There's always been one set of footprints in the sand. It's been me and you walking in the same body.